processing department, we have soybean meal as the king with a protein supply at about 87% TDM, which is still pretty decent, by the way, and 48% crude protein. Typically, though, we do not feed soybean meal for energy, so that's why I don't talk about it for energy. Sunflower and canola, less protein, but also less TDM. Soy is actually the total opposite. The approach, the, the small grains for TDN, and fairly low for crude protein for our reference. Soy rolls is a tremendous feed, but guess what? It sells very fast to feed companies as a carrier. So it's hard for us to put our hands on it. Another cool product, probably you don't see much of it around here, beet pulp. An excellent energy source. We're still dropping. We got corn, barley, uh, the oil seed co products. Now we're down to beet pulp, and we're down in the 60 to 70 percent range for TDN, and definitely not a source of protein. Remember, we're needing energy. You can get your hands on some beet pulp, it would work out. <coughs> Let's get to this number that we've been talking about from the beginning. So, this is that famous factor. What that number is, is you multiply the price of corn times that factor, and it gives you the opportunity price of the feed you're interested in purchasing. The important thing I have to say, so if I've done it for every one of these feeds, when I did it, corn was $4.30, $4.40 a bushel, multiplied by this factor, and it gave me those numbers. Before I say any more, any low number is going to be a high wet product. Bean tailings, which are almost 20% dry matter, wet beet pulp, which is 25% dry matter, potatoes, cold potatoes, which are about 18% dry matter. So a low number will represent a feed that's typically fairly wet. So if you forget everything else about today, remember the number 10 and use that as your reference value. So if corn is trading for $4 and somebody's selling you potatoes for $20, the price is good because you multiply 4 times 10 and you're going to get to 40. That means you could have bought the potatoes for 40, but somebody sold them to you for 20, so that's a good buy, right? The fun thing about cow-calf operators is you maybe only need to do this thing once in the late fall, maybe early winter, when you go, okay, I'm going to need energy, I'm going to need protein. And you can do what you need to do to put away some of this feed throughout the winter season. You can even buy potatoes, <coughs> sell them, bag them. You gotta do a little something about them. You can't just put them in the bag as they are. You can do that so you can get to them. As you begin to go a little more on the number, so instead of 10, let's go to 20. So between this range, you begin to throw in high energy feeds that are wet. Okay, so 20 on down to 10 high energy fees that are still high in moisture. You got distillers, you got gluten feed, and modified distillers. Let's stop there for a minute and we'll ask a question. How much are distillers, modified distillers selling for right now, around here? 95 to 100. 95 to 100? That's about what I'm paying for them. So if we multiply, what's the price of corn for? Multiply that by 20, so we need to buy them for 80 bucks. There's something for 95 to 100, right? So we're gonna say, eh, maybe not. Sadly, when you look at this chart, through the far right here is the actual quote, and it could be FOB Iowa, so be careful. Because I just have to go where I can find a quote, right? And so when you compare this number, which is what you can pay for them, but this number, what you have to pay for them, you can go down that list. I don't think there's one feed that you could buy today that would be at a good price value relative to corn. That's this, is feed corn. Nothing wrong with feeding corn to the old cows. Don't feed too much of it. We've talked about that too. We're going to use what? Two to three pounds a day? Try to take care of them for about one month then you're good to go, assuming you have really, really poor hay. Because most of you, I'm sure, are doing a good job with hay and fields and so forth, and your hay quality is probably pretty decent. So as you look at this, that's the challenging thing, as you keep moving forward to the 30s and the 40s, then you're looking at dry products that are high in energy. 
distillers grains, fry, which would be an excellent energy and protein source for a cow. You have to multiply by almost 40. So you're in the $160 range. But the goal I had, which is not too far from here, is $167 for dry distillers. Should you not buy it because it doesn't reach that? Well, you gotta think about the protein too. If you're feeding a, a, a poor quality porridge and that four to nine percent protein base, <coughs> distillers is a perfect buy for you. I'm not saying you shouldn't be looking at any of these feeds. There are some good options for you to consider. With that, I'm gonna complete this and we can visit about any feed that you want to talk about or any questions you may have. Thank you. Yes.